Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Look. First and 101, class is in session. Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek. I mean, these guys making the killer with no competition. Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys. Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed. They cannot be beat, take a seat, watch them do their thing on the MIC. Face defeat, they cannot be seen like JC. Oh my goodness, it's in killing spree. Yeah? Hey everyone, this is Andrew from Wrestling IQ 101. When I'm not hosting our podcast, I'm usually at collarandelbowbrand.com. That's right, Collar and Elbow is the only place that combines wrestling with street attire. And I know what you're thinking, I want to look fashionable too, and I also want to save 10%. So head over to collarandelbowbrand.com and use the promo code WIQ101 and look fashionable and save some money. And now, on with the show. Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Andrew, and you can follow Wrestling IQ 101 on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And today, I'm joined by Alfred Stevens, man. How's it going? I'm doing all right. How are you? I'm doing pretty well, man. You know, uh, you're a referee, you're a podcaster. I mean, you do a whole bunch of different things around ringside, right? Uh, yeah, I wear, I wear a lot of different hats. Mm-hmm. So, Alfred, I mean, you have uh, your own podcast. Can you tell people where they can find that? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it's called the Rap Lab Podcast. Um, it has nothing to do with wrestling. Uh, uh-huh. We just, uh, it's myself and two other co-hosts, uh, we just discuss uh, hip-hop artists, music, videos, stuff like that, uh, album reviews. Um, it's on uh, Apple, Apple Podcast app, uh, Spotify, uh, as well as Anchor and Stitcher. So we're, we're all over the place. And Amazon Podcast as well. Sure. Now, I'm going to tell you my favorite rapper, uh, and hopefully he makes the list of one of your favorites. Uh, my favorite is Kanye West. Is he up there? We actually did an uh, episode on Kanye West a couple months back. Uh-huh. So, uh, yeah, we, yeah we, we, spoke, we spoke about Kanye at length. I think that episode was like almost three hours long. Wow. I mean, there's a lot to talk about. He's always controversial, but his music has always been one of my favorite uh, uh, outlets to listen to when I'm, whenever I'm stressed or busy. Uh, absolutely, uh, a lot of quality there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, and I can't forget one of my all-time favorite rap duo, Outkast. I mean, <laughs> I love those guys. Yeah, uh, Andre 3000 is pretty good in, uh, himself. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so, and it's crazy because uh, you, you could see the influence on rap uh, and wrestling as well. I mean, it's not just uh, pop culture. I mean, it's the oh, fence. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, you you, know, you could tell you could tell from guys who use uh, uh, rap and hip hop as entrance scenes mm-hmm. to uh, guys who, uh, who 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 dress like they they come straight out of a music video. So yeah, and you know it's a cool thing when you combine the uh, rap culture, wrestling culture. When you can not even just rap, but any facet of who you are, and you can combine it with you know your other passions. It's pretty cool. Um, Oh, yeah. um, and, I, and I feel like wrestling is one of those great things where a lot of people are allowed to be themselves. So that, that's always a plus. Yeah, absolutely. So you're a referee. You've been able to be part of some big matches. Uh, do you have a favorite match in particular that you've been able to be in the middle of? I have a couple of, a couple of favorites. Uh-huh. Um, uh, particularly... Um, back at uh, when I used to ref for uh, SWF and uh, they had Notorious Mimi wrestle Ali Rex that was a that was a good one mm-hmm. um, I refereed uh, JD Alpha versus Anthony Silva uh, le- this past February for uh, Titan Championship Wrestling mm-hmm. so that, that that was a favorite one I've always been a I, don't, I just like action so something that just goes you know boom 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 non-stop that, that's always been uh, my favorite and then uh, yeah I've had um, I had the pleasure of um uh, refereeing in Bronx Wrestling Federation uh, in, New York, in, in the Bronx, New York City, um, mm-hmm. back when they did their uh, Escape from New York tournament. Um, so I got to work with uh, Sean Maluda, which was great. Um, oh, he's fantastic. So, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've had quite, quite, quite a few favorite matches. Yeah, you ever get like that little giddy feeling uh, 
when you know you're going to be in the ring with maybe like a legend or when you hear their music going and you're like, wow, this is going to be like a reality or something like that, you know? Well, I haven't, I haven't worked with too many big names, but uh, mm-hmm. about two years ago, um, I didn't referee the match, but uh, a ref had to take a bump and uh, I was supposed to do a run-in to continue the match and then take a bump myself. And um, Santana and Ortiz were involved in the match. And when, uh, when the promoter told me that I was going to be... Uh, was going to be working with them. Mm-hmm. Um, instantly got nervous, but you know it's a cool. Uh, but in my mind, I was like, after it was all said and done, I was like, you know, how cool is this? And at the time, they were the Impact Tag Team Champions, so I, I was just like, wow. I'm gonna. I watch these guys. I watch these guys on TV every week. You know, this is gonna be cool. Uh, uh, before I got involved in the business, um, I used to go to a lot of shows and see Matt Tremont. Mm-hmm. So when I got a chance to work with him, that was that was pretty cool. Um, Teddy Hart, I refereed a match of his once, and uh, that also had me uh, had me a little nervous as well. So I mean, yeah, I've always uh, any any time to work with with a, with a name or somebody I've I've watched myself on TV or I went to a show I rooted for uh, before I got in the business has always been always been such a great experience, and just goes to show you that uh, you never know who exactly you may end up working with. Yeah, absolutely. So a couple months ago, you had come down with the COVID virus, and you even made a post saying uh, back then that you weren't even sure if you were going to make it through it. Um, how was that experience, and what have you learned, and uh, what was that process like? Uh, in the hospital, I was actually told that uh, that uh, my, my condition was getting worse. Um, the staff at the hospital reached out to my mother and told her that she should uh, prepare to make arrangements. Yeah. And the fact that I pulled through has made me more appreciative of, of life, you know? Sure. Um, things I used to take for granted, I don't anymore. And I just have, a, like, a newfound respect and a newfound love of life itself. Um, and and being fortunate because, you know, to, uh, around 230,000 230, uh, other people who had it, um, didn't fare so well, so um, the fact that I was able to, by the grace of God, to you know, come home from from something like that, I, I don't take that lightly. So, you know, I try not to, you know, spend my days with a negative mindset. I, I try to like things that would have bothered me in the past, Andrew. I don't let them bother me anymore. If that makes sense. Sure. Like, not. I just, I, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just like in a completely different mindset. So. And just just glad to you know be here talking to you and be around overall. Yeah, I'm glad you're here too. You know, I I was in a similar situation. I didn't have COVID, uh, but a couple of years ago I was in a similar situ- situation. So I can agree when you have a new found love for life, uh, it's pretty amazing and remarkable. And I'm glad you pulled through. I mean, that was a big thing. Uh, I remember seeing all the support for you on Facebook and all the prayers and, and goodwill. I remember I even reached out to you and wanted to send you my. Uh, you know my well wishes and i'm glad to see yeah, I remember that. I, thank you for that yeah and i'm glad to see you're doing well i'm glad to see you thriving and um yeah, it's very unfortunate what's happening to to this country uh but hopefully now we're on the mend uh you know with with new people coming into power um and start the recovery feeling because uh you know covid's nothing to mess with right i mean you've learned firsthand yeah and and, and <clears throat> not to get like too political or anything, but I see a lot of people, who, and I, I've seen it on Facebook and just different places online, where people are like, "Oh, well, the COVID death rate is not that bad. Uh, it's only like a two percent death rate or something to that effect." Yeah, it's, but that's still but, too but, And I hear people say that, but at the same time, just because it doesn't kill you doesn't mean it, it, it wrecks your life. It doesn't wreck your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, uh, I had COVID back in March, and we're in November now, and mm. that's. A, a good eight months, and um, I'm still suffering from some after effects of it, and and you know uh, a, a, a lot of promotions are starting to run again or have been running again, and yeah. it's been eight months and I'm still not cleared. So, I mean, I, so so when people say say things like that, it just you know gets under my skin because I feel like unless you suffered through it or went through what I went through, um, you're not really gonna understand the uh, severity of it. Yeah, you know, I remember I, I saw like a news reporter and he said, oh, you know, I just want to get it already. And he and the other news reporter said to him, listen, you don't want this thing at all. <laughs> so 
uh, yeah, I mean, I'm glad to hear that, you know, you're, you're doing better. I'm, you know, I'm sorry that you're still having some effects from it, but, you know, you sound great, and I see you doing some great things uh, uh, in your life, so. Yeah, I just try to take things uh, one day at a time, pace myself, and, you know, just uh, not trying to, to uh, what's the word I'm looking for, not trying to do too much. Sure. So, you know, how did you get the referee shirt? Did, did one of the promoters give it to you? Did you go out and buy the referee shirt? I mean, was it uh, a passing of a torch, maybe? I mean, I always get kind of curious uh, uh, about how how that all process comes about. I mean, do you just show up with the shirt and get, you just get in the ring? Well, well what happened was, um, it's, a, it's a bit of a funny story. Uh, I'm from New York City. I live in New York City. Mm-hmm. And um, I wanted to go to wrestling school originally to become a manager. So I went to wrestling school. I went to the FTW wrestling school and the trainers were uh, Matt Stryker and Grim Reefer. Mm-hmm. And uh, Good I told them, hey, uh, I want to, I want to, they were like, well, you know, you sign up for wrestling school, they ask you, so what's your goal? So I tell them, you know, I, I, I want to be a manager. So Grim Reefer takes one good look at me, and he's like, kid, you, 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 you can't be a manager. And I'm like, why not? And he's like, you're too big to be a manager. Like, if you manage most guys on the scene today, you're bigger than a lot of them. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, huh. And then he also was like, usually managers nowadays, most of them, the market for managers is mostly women. So I'm like, okay, I'm, I don't have the size to be a manager. Historically, you look at guys like uh, like Jimmy Hart and Slick and Jim Cornette, you know, like they're, they're not the most imposing figures. Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. And, and of course, Grim Reefer, he's, he's been in the business uh, almost 20 years. So as, as a young kid who knows nothing, I can't really dispute what he says. Mm-hmm. So, so I asked him, I said, well, I don't want to be a wrestler because... Um, a lot of my uh, a lot of my leisure time in my youth and high school and college, I played um, baseball and football. So mm-hmm. my body was already like uh, crazy beat up. So especially with learning how to bump and roll and stuff, like the physicality that goes into it. Um, yeah, like I I, I I remember in wrestling school saying to myself, I'm like, there's no way I could I could I could wrestle. Every every weekend, or even some guys, they wrestle Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I said, "There's no way my body would be able to withstand that." And everybody knows their own body and their and their limits. So I asked him. I said, "So what else can I do?" He said, "Well, you could. I think you could be a referee." So at first, you know, being told that, mm-hmm. you kind of get discouraged because you know referees, at least with a, at least as a manager, you may not get the spotlight, but there's chances for you to cut a promo, get involved in a match. You get a, you get character. Referee, you just stand in the background, it's bland. And But as he was training me, I, I learned more of an appreciation for it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and then uh, after about six, six, seven months, that's when I uh, they gave me my first ref shirt, and that's when I ended up on the show. I made my debut August uh, 2016 uh, uh, in a location known as the uh, Bordy Barn out in Long Island, refereed my first match. So, yeah. Um, my initial intention wasn't to become a referee, but I've, I've embraced it ever since. Sure. So, you know, when you're traveling in the tri-state area to different shows, uh, where's the one spot that you love to get uh, some food, uh, either late night or uh, de- coming down to the show? Do you have a favorite spot? Yes. You may laugh at this, but I love Wawa. Yes! Wawa is my... Uh, Wawa, every time, I'm in Jer- every time I get a booking in New Jersey, I always make sure to, to Google where the Wawa is near the show. Um, and it's, uh, I don't know what it is about Wawa. Well, we don't have Wawa here in New York, so I, I feel like Wawa is like a treat. And then also, I've never eaten anything bad from Wawa. I've never, I've never had a bowl or a quesadilla or a sandwich that I didn't like from Wawa, so. Yeah, that's, you know, actually, I can't, I can't lie. I have a Wawa, like, down the street from me, like, two minutes away. I was just there yesterday. I was like, I have to get, I have to go to Wawa. I had to get a turkey bowl. And then the, and the amount of customization you can do and all that good stuff, oh. it really, uh, yeah, you can't you can't miss with Wawa. And then, uh, like for example, when when Titan runs in Totowa, mm-hmm. uh, there's no Wawa in Totowa, so I'll settle for Quick Trip because I, I, I group Quick Trip and Wawa into one category, even though I feel Wawa is like superior. Yeah. But 
But yeah, and then um, of course after the show, you know, IHOP is always a popular option too. Oh yeah, IHOP is good. You know what I love from IHOP? The sampler. Ah, uh, okay. That I think I but I substitute uh, the onion rings for fries. Ah, uh, okay. Because I don't like yeah. onion rings, but yeah, like wow, was the shit. You you know you know it's you know it's crazy. A lot of people when we go to the sh- when we go to IHOP after the show, uh-huh. they tend to get breakfast. I mm-hmm. normally get burgers. I think IHOP has pretty good burgers. Oh yeah. I have, yeah. I'm not gonna. No one here will dispute that with you. They have pretty decent burgers. <laughs> yeah, I've, always been a, I've always been a a burger guy, a burger or a sandwich guy. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with that. Yeah, we can definitely go out for to IHOP one day. I'm definitely down. <laughs> oh, yeah, most definitely. But yeah, um, and IHOP, Wawa, Quick Trip, or or any diner, any place I can get a good sandwich or a good burger. Yeah. You know, a co- uh, my favorite my favorite thing in Wawa, other than the bowls, is those uh, those ten inch hoagies. Oh yeah, oh yeah. What do you go for? You go for turkey, ham. Actually, no, I, I get the, uh, the 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 Italian stuff. Okay. So you know the uh, the salami, the pepperoni. Mm. I usually throw uh, I usually throw either pepper jack or, or Swiss, depending on how I'm feeling that day. Uh, lettuce, tomato, mayo, and uh, salt, pepper, and uh, and, and olive oil. Yeah. You know, Mike Dell, we had him on uh, not too long ago, but he was telling us that he prefers sheets over Wawa. Ooh. And I was like, I don't know about that, Mike. I mean, Wawa's the shit. <laughs> yeah. And Wawa is like the, the undisputed king of of, yeah. uh, of of quick food. Yeah, Wawa, uh, that's funny because a lot of people come on and that, that is their favorite place to stop uh, is Wawa for sure. Um, even if you don't want a, even if you don't want a sandwich, I mean, if you're in a soup mood or a salad mood, like you just have everything. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it is, and they have great sides. The mashed potatoes are awesome. Uh, I don't know if you like Old Bay. I do. Yeah, you get this. Like, you can put that in a bowl too. Yeah, you put that in your potatoes. It's amazing. I didn't even. My friend from Maryland, he was like, "You need to try that." I was like, "Cause I was a little sketchy." I was like, "I don't know." He's like, "Just try it, bro." And I was like, "I did," and I was like. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's good stuff. Yeah, the uh, Old Bay is reserved for seafood. So yeah. uh, I've never personally thought of putting Old Bay in uh, mashed potatoes. So I might have to try that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Do it, man. You'll, you'll love it for sure. Um, you know, when you're, when you're on the road to the raid, when you're on the way to the ring, um, do you ever get nervous? Do you feel like, you know, this is going to be a, a tough match for you or a good match? I get I get nervous, but not in the sense of I'm nervous I'm going to do bad. I mm-hmm. just get nervous because you know uh, with, with with wrestling you're, you're there live, um, you know the fans are there. The fans are going to react how they're going to react. It's like if something goes wrong, like there's no pause button, there's no rewind button. You just got to keep going with it. I mean, as time has gone on, mm-hmm. uh, I've gotten less nervous. It's not like a bad nervous, but like you know, I, how, like how do I describe it? Like some butterflies. Like, you, know, you just get that. You, you just get that feeling. Like you know, let's let's go out there and give the fans a good show. Let's mm-hmm. let's make sure that this that these matches are are what they uh, are are what they paid to are what they paid to see. I think the wrestlers get more nervous than the refs do because at least for the referee, um, depending on how the show is set up, you know, I may get three, four, sometimes maybe five matches a night on, on any given night. Mm-hmm. So you know. If I if I make a mistake here, I have four other chances to redeem myself throughout the show. So, but, but yeah, I still get nervous. But it's it's not like like I'll tell you this story. My very first match, I have a referee. I was nervous to the point I was literally rocking and shaking backstage. Like I I was like almost like scared out of my mind. Like to the point where I almost psyched myself out and, and almost didn't want to go out there. But uh, the last the last show I refereed in March before I got before everything shut down. It's just, mm-hmm. a, it's just, it's just, it's a good feeling. Like, I look forward to every match on the show. I look forward to having fun, and I think like at the end of the day, um, there's two things you got to worry about. Just a, uh, as a referee, uh, making sure that the participants of the match don't get hurt, mm-hmm. making sure they're safe, and uh, yeah, and then just and just having fun and, ju- and just trying to have a good time out there. Has anybody given you good advice about refereeing? Uh- you know, while you're out there, before you get out there? Oh, absolutely. Um, so uh, two of my biggest mentors are in the New Jersey area. So uh, 
you're probably familiar with them both, uh, Ryan T. and Pat Savino. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so I, I talk to both of those guys constantly. And um, anytime I have, like, a concern or something that uh, I may have uh, messed up on, I always talk to those guys, and they've always been able to calm me down. Um, Pat has, uh, and Pat's like a real, a real class act, a, a true veteran of the sport. And um, he, he's, there have been times, like, I'll give you a good, a good example. Um, there was a show in Queens one time. This was uh, 2019, last year. And Pat and I were on the show, and uh, every time I, that, you know, uh, I'm around a veteran of, of Pat Thatcher. I'll ask him, like, hey, do you think you can, you know, watch my match? Even if you don't watch the whole thing, watch a couple minutes, give me, you know, give me some pointers. And there was a match where the, the two competitors changed the finish on me, and I didn't know. So they told me to look out for a move. It was a submission. Mm-hmm. And then he had a completely different move and went for a three, and I froze because I'm like, wait, the guy's not supposed to kick out. And yeah. even though you're, even though in wrestling school as a ref, you're taught to, you know, treat it like it's a legit fight, and um, and then count anyway. But you know, you know, you never want to get heat with the boys. Mm-hmm. So I, I kind of froze, and uh, you know, I got got to the back. As soon as I walked back through the curtain, Pat pulled me to the side. He's like, "Listen, it's not your fault." Like you know, Pat Pat is good for that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, he's like, "It's not your fault. Uh, you didn't know." Um, you know, you'll, you'll get them next time. Don't beat yourself up. And then uh, Pat's been around so long that he's made those mistakes, too, so he can relate. And he knows how that type of thing feels. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, the biggest thing I've learned from Pat, though, as far as, like, advice, uh, there was a, a match. Uh, it was back in, uh, I think this, too, was also in Totowa. Um, I, I refereed a match between Steve Mack and uh, Mike Orlando, uh, where Mike Orlando, I think he, like, snapped his fibula or something. And, um, like, I panicked, threw up an X, and uh, the video is actually still up on YouTube uh, to this day. And, um, you know, Pat, Pat uh, after that, he walked me through, you know, the proper procedures and protocols of what to do if somebody's seriously hurt. Not that I did a bad job, but, you know, things to do for, for next time. So Pat, Pat and Ryan are always constantly uh, sitting me down or, or texting me and, you know, um, giving me some great sound advice, and uh, everything they've taught me or, or said to me, I've always, I've always applied it, and used it. So, uh, I'm very grateful for those two to to have been under their learning tree. Yeah, absolutely, some great guys, and it's awesome that you were in the ring with one of my favorites, Monster Mac, and of course Mike Orlando. Um, uh, when growing up, how did you get into wrestling? I mean, how how does that happen? I mean, what did you like? What what didn't you? Uh, what did you fall in love with? Um. So when I was a kid, uh, I used to, when my parents were at work, um, uh-huh. uh, and my grandmother used to babysit me, she would always have wrestling on the TV. Um, my grandmother was a huge uh, WCW fan. So, you know, I would spend days at my grandma's house. And um, at 6 o'clock on Saturdays, Saturday night would come on. So we would, we would sit there and we would watch. We watched that. And my, and my grandma, I miss her so dearly. She was uh, she was one of those old school wrestling fans. Like I don't know if you ever heard uh, of, of like a couple of the uh, veterans, like the old timers. Mm-hmm. Don't describe how wrestling was like for the for the grandmothers, and they would like swing they would swing their purses at the heels that they sat in the front row and stuff like that. Like oh, my yeah. grandma was that type. Like and if you were a heel, she absolutely hated you. And I would see like her reaction to certain things, and it would just entertain me so much. And that's like what we bonded over. Like, uh, I'll never forget, uh, every time she used to see Ric Flair on the screen, she would get upset, like, instantly. Uh, anytime him and the horseman came out, and um, I vividly remember we were watching uh, Saturday night, the week after uh, Hogan had joined the NWO. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. You would have thought, the way she was uh, behaving, you would have thought, like, Hulk Hogan, like, walked up to her and spat in her face. Like, she was so personally offended by... By uh, by that, it's two things she always hated: uh, heels and masked wrestlers. Even if the masked wrestler was a good guy, she didn't like anybody who concealed their identity. So, so her and I bonding over that is what uh, is what is what drew me into wrestling. Um, my earliest memories in life are just sitting down with my grandma watching wrestling. Now, I'm going to ask you who your favorite wrestler is, but it better not be Ric Flair or Rey Mysterio. So. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, <laughs> my favorite wrestler of all time is uh, Bret Hart. Okay. Is that, that's grandma approved? 
that's grandma too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Cause... Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. My, my my grandma always liked. Uh, she always liked technical workers. She always liked uh, anybody who. Act, but she used to say that she had a phrase for like people that were like submission heavy. She she used to say that that's real wrestling. Mm. So. Yeah, any 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 anybody technical is always is always a uh, a favorite of mine. So even like modern day guys like Drew like I have a have a strong appreciation for the Daniel Bryan and those type of guys. Yeah, those, those guys. I mean, they were killing it back in the day, and, and they still are. I mean, they they don't change. I mean, they're they're some classic guys to watch. Oh. Yeah. Uh, you know, like you, you alluded to before, you started in 2016. You had some phenomenal trainers. Um, where do you see yourself going? You know, when you get back into the ring uh, and start doing some things, where do you see yourself at the end of the day? Do you want to be, a, you know, a part of, you know, indie legend? Do you want to go or make it in AEW or Impact or WWE? I mean, what's the goal? I mean, before I got sick, my end goal was always to be on somebody's um, uh, TV show, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I didn't have a specific place of where I wanted to go. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to be in either, you know, Ring of Honor, MLW, AEW, w, a- anywhere, anywhere that could have that could have put me on national TV. You know, my goal, I vote, and I say this to like all my friends I travel with. I'm like, yeah, my goal is to, you know, have a contract with with one of the major promotions. So, I mean, if I never, I mean, not that my career is like slowing down because of my uh, COVID recovery. Like, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for I'm not saying I like I definitely don't give up because I do plan on coming back mm-hmm. but the goal has changed because now I just want to get my rhythm back you know yeah sure yeah you've been through a lot man you've been through the ringer so it's glad to hear that you that you haven't lost the passion to get back into the ring and that you that you want to get back on your feet it's funny because when I was in the hospital all I was doing was watching wrestling like, other than sleeping and eating like mm-hmm. uh yeah, I, I was watching. I, even though I was sick, I was still there watching tape. You know, so the passion, the passion never died out. Yeah. But uh, once, once I get myself time to reacclimate to everything, then I'll, I'll go back. Uh, and plus, the world has to come back to normal too. So yeah. once all of that happens, um, I hope to, uh, to you know resume chasing the dream. Yeah, and no, I can't wait to see what happens with that. I know people listening are going to be cheering for you to. To, to get back in the ring and make it as far as you can in wrestling because it's, it's uh, you know, the, up, the upside is the world's your oyster, right? Once you get in that ring. So uh, let me ask you this, Alfred. For people who don't know you and people who want to get to know you, what are some of the things that you like that would kind of surprise everybody? Um, well, I have, a, I have a really huge action figure collection that I'm very proud of. Okay. So, um, yeah, so like I, I collect two lines of action figures. I collect the uh, the Mattel WWE line because, of course, what wrestling fan wouldn't? Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm very big into uh, I love Marvel, so I collect the Marvel Legends line of action figures. All right, so you have yeah, a. So, I'm sorry. No, no, I, I was saying I, I'm a huge collector of things, and I also collect baseball cards too. So. All right. Well, who's? Who, uh, I have two questions. One: Who's your favorite baseball team, and who's your favorite superhero? Uh, favorite baseball team would be the New York Mets, as sad as that is. Yes. And uh, favorite superhero would have to be, honestly, um, in the Marvel universe. Uh, I know this is going to shock a lot of people. I, I break it up into categories. Overall, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to X Men, uh, I absolutely love Gambit. All right, not some not bad choices, man. I'm glad you're a Mets fan. I'm also suffering along with you, but hopefully Michael Cohen can change that. Well, I'm hoping so because uh, at this rate, anything is uh, anything is better than the Will Pond. Yeah, I know. I was telling uh, my dad he's also a suffering Met fan. I was like, you know what? I don't even mind at this point if he buys me a World Series because it's been so long. I've always wanted to see one. So, in my lifetime, the Mets have been to the World Series twice yeah. and have uh, and have lost both. So I'm uh, I'm right there with you. Um, <laughs> And I'm also a Jets fan for football, so I don't know which one I'm going to see first. But if I was a betting man, I, I think before I die, the Mets win a Super Bowl before the Jets. I mean, the Mets win a World Series before the Jets get to a Super Bowl. Yeah. I'm also a Jets fan, so I definitely feel your pain there, too. Um, 
<laughs> and uh, for yeah, for it's real. Been, it's, been a rough, it's been a rough 2020 in sports for the both of us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it has. Uh, wait, who's your favorite New York Met of all time? Uh, my favorite New York Met of all time is uh, Piazza. Same here, man. Yo, we have a lot in common. IHOP, the yeah. Mets, <laughs> wrestling. Uh, and uh, J- Jacob DeGrom, close second. Uh, I was gonna say, uh, yeah, I was gonna say David Wright because he's always been uh, such a class act. Yeah, uh, I, I, I was actually uh, I was at his last game that he ever played. Yeah, um, which ironically uh, went into extra innings, and they pulled him after his first at bat, mm-hmm. and uh, the Mets ended up winning in like sixteen. But I was glad I was there to, uh, to, to see him on his send off. So yeah, you know, and it's crazy. Growing up, I was there for Mike Piazza's first game as a Met. That was in uh, '98. Yeah, I was there with my dad. Then wow. I went to the Mike Piazza Hall of Fame, Mets Hall of Fame induction, and then I went to oh, his it? retirement Wait, number. That's where, that's where they gave away the uh, the replica of Piazza jersey, right? Yeah, I have one of those. Yeah, I, I I was at that game too. Yeah, I mean, like you talk about full circle. You know, I've, I was I was there from the beginning with Piazza, and then I was there at the end. So, I mean, he's always been my favorite. He's always been clutch. I've always loved, like, players like Ricky Henderson or, or uh, Re- um, you know, um, Jose Reyes, like, those guys who could just steal, like, so quick. Uh, they they always make the game so much fun. Oh, yeah. I, I just – my only uh, ask of uh, Mr. Cohen is uh, please bring back the black uniform. Oh yeah, yeah. Don't don't change anything. Just bring back the black ones. I'm with that. I miss, I miss the black Met hats and the uh, the black uniforms. Those are my favorite. Yeah, you know, I'm wondering. Uh, you know, I'd like to see some of those, like the old classic. You know, like the the shirt one, not the button down. Uh, oh, the, oh, the one like, without the pullover. The one without the button. Yeah, like the '86 one. Oh, I, I actually have a uh, a Gary Carter replica '86. Oh yeah? yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, my ex, my dad and I we went to a uh, the world premiere. I mean the uh, premiere of the E sixty, the Daryl Strawberry and uh, Doc Gooding one. And the, and the Doc Gooding, oh, that, that, yeah. that was a good that was a good thirty for thirty. Yeah. Yeah, we went we went to oh man the uh, the uh, the was the ballroom the in the Sayreville. Uh, oh. Anyway. We went there, and they had uh, they were actually there in person, Doc Gooding and, and Daryl Strawberry. And I kept telling my dad, I was like, you should get the VIP one if you're going to meet them. Uh, but we got to see like a Q&A question, and then they played the premiere of it. And it was actually pretty good. It was that really a phenomenal piece. Yeah, that's actually one of my, uh, my favorite ESPN-produced pieces of all time. Yeah. You know, it's crazy how, how many great people have come through the Mets, and they just can't seem to do it. <laughs> It's just nuts. You know what? The, the Mets are good for two things. The Mets, in, in my history, history of following the team, uh-huh. they're good for trading away great players for nothing, almost nothing in return. Yeah. And they're good for getting Hall of Fame veterans on, at the end of their careers. Yeah, it's true. Because but... uh, when I, I mean, obviously I wasn't, I wasn't around back then, but reading what they traded Tom Steer for, yeah, <laughs> that was, uh, that was rough. Well, yeah, and it's rough to see that you know he recently passed away and and that he was able to reunite with the Mets in his last years. Oh, well, I actually went to a uh, Met game back in 2013, and I, I vividly remember it because uh, it was Travis Darno's first major league game. Wow! And he hit a home run that game, even though they got blown out by the Tigers. And and I always laugh about it because it was Tom Seaver Day, and before the game they had like a ceremony to celebrate him, mm-hmm. and they were giving away Tom Seaver bobbleheads. And in my mind, I'm like, you guys really lost 15 to three on the day when the greatest pitcher in the history of the organization was at the game to see it live. <laughs> yeah, they seem to do that because I remember they lost like the Piazza game, the Hall of Fame game, or something like that. Yeah, they lost that too. <laughs> yes, yeah, so they they just known for doing things like that, goofy things. Um, but I will tell you, the coolest giveaway I ever got though was a Star Wars bobblehead. Uh, like I'm a huge I'm a Star Wars fan so like to get a Mr. Met bobblehead and he's with Chewbacca I'm like yo that is the coolest thing of all time yeah, I, I, and this is one thing I'll tell you because Yankee fans they they they, they, they always uh, brag and boast about about their team but mm-hmm. Mets tickets are more affordable True. I, I'll tell you that um, 
twenty dollars can't even get you a seat in Yankee Stadium. At least you can get in and, and feel. Um, and then the giveaways, like uh, there were a couple games I went to in the couple in the years. Um, uh, a couple years ago, tops. And they had people from Tops there giving a giving away free packs of, of, of baseball. Um, the, the bobbleheads, the bobbleheads. I have a Jerry Seinfeld Met bobblehead, which is pretty cool. That is cool. Uh, yeah, he's he's uh, at a podium with a microphone, but he's wearing a he's wearing a Mets jersey. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty cool. And then of course all the all the player bobbleheads. I've got Jose Reyes. I got Curtis Granderson, Tom Seaver. Yeah, so quite a quite a few of those guys. Uh, I've got Mr. Met Bob, countless Mr. Met bobbleheads, different variations. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. When they got rid of Curtis Granderson, I was in tears. I know he was a little bit older, but he was so clutch. He, he, and he was a fan favorite too. Yeah. Um, the best days to go to Met games, though, of course, I know you know about Free Shirt Fridays. So. Oh, Free Shirt Fridays, yeah. I mean, I, I love a, I love a Free Shirt Friday for sure. Or City yeah, Tuesday, right? Uh, yeah. I have so many Met shirts that were giveaways. It's, it's, it's insane at this point. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, you talk about just some... I know what I love about uh, City Field? The food. Yeah, the food selection is top-notch. Um, you, you know the uh, wing place? Like, yeah. I, uh, I also... Um, one of my favorite places to go in there is Pat La Frida's. The uh-huh. steak sandwiches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're, and then of course, if you want like Shake Shack, there's a Shake Shack in City Field, which you know Shake Shack is always good. Oh, you know what I love in the international section. I go to Mama's. I've never, I've never strolled over to the international section. Uh, oh, you got uh, ever? Yeah, you got to get the. It's a turkey sandwich, like fresh cut turkey, uh, and and uh, mozzarella, and they put like hot gravy on it. Oh man, you're gonna. Mm, top notch. The, the next time you um, you go to City Field, though, have you ever eaten at the kosher the kosher grill? Uh, I have actually eaten at the kosher grill. <laughs> that, that that their pastrami sandwich at the kosher at the kosher stand is is next is second to none. Yeah, well, I'm Jewish, so you know I've been there. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. So, yeah. yeah but, but, uh, all you need, you don't need anything but mustard. Just the pastrami, the mustard, oh. the rye, and the pick. Oh, and the pickle. Can't, can't oh yeah oh you can't mess up kosher at city field uh yeah that yeah they have some great stuff there i i personally like uh the the wing place in the on the uh butt liser butt wiser porch you get like a helmet and and you get it filled with wings and tots for like 20 bucks i'm like damn this is like the best deal yeah, that's, that's, yeah city field always has always had some affordable deals food wise um uh, usually when I go, I try to sit in like the outfield in hopes of catching a home run ball. So I'm usually in the hundred on the 100 level in center or or, or less. Mm-hmm. And um, they have a thing called the grub tub, similar to the wing the wing deal. Um, the grub tub, you get uh, tenders, fries, and the end of the bowl connects to your soda cup. Mm. So uh, yeah, so your your uh, your cup is part of the bowl, and, and the straw sticks out. It's like the greatest invention ever. Yeah, it is pretty good. Yeah, anything that makes it more convenient to watch the game, I'm all for. Because uh, you know, my I, when I go up, my dad, he, 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 City Field's been there around for some for so many years now, and we've been going since the conception of it. And he still likes to tour the stadium. I'm like, Dad, let's just watch the game. We're missing the game. Uh, but it's you know, so anything to make the game more uh, watchable, I, I'm down for that. So that sounds like a good idea. Get that thing. You, typically, what I do, I like if I, if I don't have anything planned before the game, I mm-hmm. try to get there like super early so I could get, uh, go to batting practice. Oh wow! Yeah, so uh, I've got quite a few baseballs in my collection that were uh, knocked into the stands from BP. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. one that uh, Ronald Acuna from the Braves hit, and then I have another one that Michael Conforto hit. Damn, that's yeah, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Those are some. <laughs> Those are some keepers right there. Uh, yeah, I gotta be honest. Like, I gotta tell you a real quick story. Then, uh, when I was a kid, I, I used to collect baseball cards like you. And uh, my dad, you know, we opened up. Uh, I got a what's his name? Oh, man, John Rocker card. And I remember I ripped it up, and my dad just looked at me like he was so happy, <laughs> like like a proud dad and son moment when I ripped up that John Rocker card and I threw the ashes away. It's like you can't be coming at my team. 
Oh yeah, Mets fans, especially his comments about 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 uh, he made some racially sensitive comments about uh, people that ride the seven train and all types of stuff. Yeah. Nah, you you couldn't you you couldn't you couldn't, you couldn't uh, be a supporter of that guy and be a Mets fan. It's like yeah. blasphemy. Yeah, so I just remember I ripped up that card and my dad just had like the biggest grin on. And he was like, I did well in life. So I was like, yeah, dad, screw this guy. Screw this guy for not liking New Yorkers. Screw this guy for not liking the Mets. And then was, I remember he came and he played actually for like the Mets minor league, I think, right? Yeah. So, yeah, screw him. <laughs> uh, there's only one baseball player that makes my blood boil. Uh-huh. He actually, uh, he's played in the NL East his whole career. Uh, I have never liked Bryce Harper. Really? Yeah, I, uh, I I just like Bryce Harper with an intense passion. I thought you were gonna say Chipper Jones. I have a, you know what? I have a respect for Chipper. I have a deep immense amount of a lot of those Atlanta Braves: Chipper Jones, John Small, uh, Greg Maddox. Even though Tom Glavin played for us, him too. Mm-hmm. Andrew Jones. I, I have a I have I have a good amount of respect for those guys. Um, they they gave us a lot of they gave us a lot of uh, butt whoopings, but. I feel like Bryce Harper is uh, overpaid, overrated, and disrespectful. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. Yeah. Well, you know, Alfred, it's been great catching up with you, man. I'm glad you're on the mend. I'm glad to hear great things are coming for you. Uh, Can you just tell people again where they can get your podcast and where they can get you on social media? Oh, yeah. So the podcast is uh, Rap Lab Podcast. We're on, um, uh, on the Apple Podcast app. Um, we're also on a Spotify, Amazon podcast, and uh, Stitcher as well. Um, as far as like to, to reach out to me, um, uh, my Instagram and my Twitter are both the same. It's it's uh, ref r e f underscore al a l underscore stevens s t e b e n s stevens with a b. So it's ref al, ref underscore al underscore stevens um, on uh, both Instagram and Twitter. Um, both of my profiles are public, so if you follow me on Twitter, I'll follow you right back. And um, yeah, anybody can reach out to me if they want to say hi, talk about wrestling, talk about hip hop, or whatever you want to talk about. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I found my new best buddy here because we got so much in common. So I'm glad, I'm glad uh, again that you're all right. I'm glad, uh, you know, uh, I'm glad to see uh, things are moving in the right direction for you, man. And for us, this has been Wrestling IQ 101. You can follow us right here on YouTube. You can listen to us on uh, as well on YouTube. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wrestling IQ 101. And uh, we'll see you guys very soon.